Hi everyone, Fosu Muhammad Sharaf with you. Uh, our interesting uh, model today uh, is absorption uh, refrigeration cycle, uh, ammonia water. Uh, first of all, uh, just, uh, try to uh, assign your folder, destination folder. What is your drive? Okay, what is your working folder? Don't open your model from desktop. Just open from open MATLAB first, and then go to your destination folder from here. You will find your model here. Uh, sort by name and group by type from from this small arrow, and you will find your folder and all contents uh, um, in it. Okay. Uh, this model is um, is water ammonia properties. Uh, these are for liquid uh, phase, and this is for vapor phase. Saturated liquid line and saturated vapor line, and, and the same for ammonia. Okay, so you can. Uh, this is a function of um, temperature. So you have to assign uh, temperature as input in order to. Uh, get your outputs, density, uh, vapor, uh, uh, specific volume, uh, vapor in sulby, vapor entropy, uh, liquid uh, thermal conductivity, and so on. Okay. Okay. Let's go for uh, our model. Okay. Okay. This is our model. It's about uh, absorption refrigeration cycle. And to be honest. Uh, this cycle is, is so complicated, uh, and I I found myself um, stuck in uh, how to. It is it is simple, thermodynamically simple, but uh, um, the thermophysical properties for uh, um, uh, between uh, uh, generator and absorption and heat exchanger. These three units, the comparison uh, process. Is, is hard to find an exact uh, um, uh, theoretical formula for enthalpy, especially enthalpy. But I, f I tried uh, to find, uh, to correlate some correlations and from literature, and the model is um, working fine. Uh, just you have to. Uh, you have to uh, go to your model view, model view, model browser, and check all of this. Okay, set your simulation time into zero. Okay, let's click here. Oh, okay, this is what behind the mother block. Okay, we have here, as you can see, we have a, a evaporator unit, condenser, absorber. Okay, absorber and the absorber uh, is going to deliver uh, uh, the refrigerant uh, with water via heat exchanger to the generator. The generator is responsible for uh, heat generation and heat addition to the cycle. And then the vapor, uh, pure uh, ammonia. Uh, is going to be called the condenser unit, and there is expansion valve going through the um, evaporator. This is the, co the cooling area. Okay, this is low pressure cycle, and this is high pressure cycle. Okay, uh, the the working uh, uh, the power the power uh, through the pump is it could be neglected, so there is no pump in the system. Okay. This is our main cycle. As you can see here, we have evap evaporator, absorber, heat exchanger, generator, condenser. And uh, this is a performance block in order to assign some uh, performance uh, parameters. First of all, double clicking on this one, and you can uh, assign your uh, coefficient of performance. Let's go for 0.56. This is a normal uh, value of uh, COP uh, for such cycles. It's between 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 5 up to uh, 0.8, something like this. And the normal normal value is around 0.56. Okay. 
and we can assign as uh, a uh, the cooling load uh, for the evaporator so you can uh, what is the temperature of the, your evaporator uh, normally it's around uh, 2 degrees Celsius minus 2 uh, up to 5 degrees Celsius something like this how many the refrigerant you are going to use suppose I'm going for one, 150 ton 10 tons something like this and uh, the coil there is a coil inside the evaporator what is the coil thermal conductivity coil our outer diameter and uh, inner diameter okay it's up to your design uh, the absorber okay let's go for absorber we have to assign just tem uh, absorber temperature okay it's around 30 35 34 something like this for heat exchanger we need to assign only the effectiveness 80 85 and for generator this is the load for heat addition it's uh, it's around 90 uh, up to 150 I will examine. Uh, we can change this dynamically if you would like, but just going for a zero uh, time domain and we will see the effect. 100 for condenser, it's around 64, 65, something like this. This is a quite normal uh, values for in order to assign your results, uh, your inputs. Okay. Um, First of all, after uh, um, controlling our inputs, let's run, uh, uh, make our run, saving, I'm sorry, saving, and see uh, what is our results. Let's hit run again. Okay, let's begin from the absorber unit. For absorber unit, as you can see here, a uh, little bit, increasing, uh, okay, for absorber unit, there is some kind of inputs. Uh, the calculated uh, refrigerant mass flow rate is going as an input. And salby of um, if the, uh, coming from the evaporator to the absorber unit. This is an input. And salby from heat exchanger to the absorber. And salby also from the absorber to the exchanger. Okay. And uh, there is a, a heat exchanger temperature coming for the absorber unit from the generator okay pressure this is your pressure a strong uh, a strong mass flow rate weak mass flow rate okay and there's an absorber uh, power and absorber to, uh, heat transfer area okay let's go for heat exchanger a little bit complicated surely you can double click on your model and you can uh, controlling your code adding formulas uh, as you can see here these are your inputs and these are your outputs so you can uh, add more inputs here if you would like in order to discover your outputs okay okay so I let's go outside okay uh, this is your effectiveness we control this this is generator temperature uh, it's all be from generator to the heat exchanger coming absorber temperature a strong and weak um, flow rates coming and there is we are going to discover this is your outlet temperature to the absorber if you turn back to the absorber you will find this is 48 you will find it here there is an input here and the output here so the, the, the model is um, is a little bit complicated for field with forward and backward stream so it is not uh, it is not it wasn't very easy to 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 follow this one and temperatures in salby you'll find your in salby uh, this is similar load uh, on heat exchanger so the heat exchanger area of heat exchanger and this is uh, uh, ammonia concentration as you can see it's around uh, 32 uh, percent 33 34 uh, 0.4 something like this according to these uh, inputs uh, let's go for generation generator unit based on uh, temperature uh, generator temperature i am going to let's reform this one uh, let's reform temperature into uh, one color as you can see here right click formatting background format and 
because this is a temperature and this is in Salby. Okay, this is in Salby. I will refer, format in Salby uh, as a gray. Okay, and for pressure, this is pressure, high pressure. This is your pressure. Uh, let's form this as a green, as a pressure. Let's go for green. Okay. Uh, this is a um, temperature of gen uh, generator temperature is responsible for uh, in this is your in Salby goes to the condenser a pressure high pressure and uh, generator area it's around as you can see here for condenser unit this is input in Salby coming from the generator okay and we have a condenser in Salby uh, okay, as you can see here, for uh, ferrons and or ammonia, okay, at pressure, so the condenser unit, okay, and uh, going for uh, based on this is the pressure of condenser pressure based on uh, temperature of the condenser evaporator. Evaporator is responsible to calculate uh, uh, mass flow rate through the cycle, uh, refrigerant mass flow rate. And so, um, uh, energy uh, through the evaporator. Uh, what is your area of your evaporator? Evaporator coil length, okay, in meter. And performance, uh, because the coefficient of performance is responsible to uh, calculate the uh, generator power. As you can see, generator power is around uh, 62 kilowatts. And this is maximum COP, COP is that uh, we can extract from our cycle, it's around 1 by 4, and uh, relative performance ratio. So you can double clicking on your performance model and you can try to reform or um, you know, add some inputs or outputs, what is the cost of the cycle, something like this. Okay. Let's go dynamically. I, I would like to go dynamically. If you go outside here in MATLAB workspace, you will find your results. Suppose you write here uh, MR or refrigerant mass flow rate, and you'll find your value. Okay. And um, uh, week, M, week, mass flow rate. Okay. Week. QA is a uh, absorber. Uh, thermal energy you will find your uh, value here so you can uh, save your these save all of this value into your uh, 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 excel sheet or something like this let's go dynamically so i will uh, suppose i need to discover um, the effect of something on another something something like this so i uh, or relative change uh, between two uh, two uh, parameters or something like this, I will set my simulation time into infinity and saving. Okay, and let's hit run and try to change the load, try to change the COP, try to change some temperature. What is the effect we are going to discover? Uh, let's hit run and see. Let's changing the load, double clicking on the operator. The, the, the model is running now in simulation time. Okay, let's in, uh, increasing the load. Just to click on the on this cursor and move right or left, as you can see here. I'm changing uh, the load uh, on the evaporator up to maybe 50, 50 ton per hour, as you can see here. Okay, with respect to time. I I'm just need to discover uh, the effect of, uh, let's increase the temperature up to 5 degrees Celsius or, t or 7, 8, 9, 10 degrees Celsius, okay. Let's change the absorber temperature and let's in increase it up to 36 for condenser. Let's increase it a little bit, okay, 37, okay. For generator, uh, let's increase the temperature uh, up to 110, for example. Okay. Uh, effectiveness, let's increase the effectiveness a little bit, 0.85. Okay. And we can stop. 
sure you can pause your model you can pause it make a change and click pause in order to make another change or return it to your original case or something like this uh, going for data inspector here okay as you can see in order to sure to, sh to present your results here in a data inspector you have firstly you have to for each stream you would like to show and click on this point dotted and uh, select uh, send the stream to data inspector okay or you can click here so i stop this screen a uh, stream so i can go here and stream selected uh, to data inspector be sure that this is small square is a visualized signal uh, sent to uh, data inspector for all your streams you can uh, click to click on your uh, clicking on your all streams you would like and you can send it to a data inspector okay so i already prepared this before so i will go here and you can show more results if you would like okay as you can see here now uh, going this is absorber temperature we already changed uh, this is the mass flow rate as you can see here changing in mass flow rate uh, weak solution as you can see here weak solution and there is a strong solution i think strong solution is here uh, yes this is your strong solution on the same figure so you can um, discover the difference between uh, weak and solution by adding uh, data uh, uh, highlight okay you so you can move your cursor here in order to show your uh, i will make a one another one okay uh, to show the deviation between uh, so you can make many runs this is run number two you can this is number one this is a zero domain so you can make many runs and add figures here uh, if you would like let's hide um, uh, going for uh, uh, okay I'm sorry I uh, this is uh, weak and this is strong I'm sorry on the same figure and absorber power you can add absorber power let's go for uh, generator power okay a condenser power absorber and condenser and evaporator evaporator power okay and uh, let's go for generator yes generator power as you can see here four uh, elements and four parameters for area absorber area uh, and um, some temperature changes you can add temperatures as you can see here and shall be concentration of the uh, this is your concentration I can format it so from point to uh, okay okay I up to point point three five three point three five and that will size the figure as you can see here, this is from 0.3, uh, okay, 0.3, 30%. Okay, this is concentration. And so will be uh, generator area, uh, changing in generator area, uh, condenser temperature, condenser power, uh, condenser area. This is your condenser area. Recycle uh, or refrigerant, I'm sorry, refrigerant mass flow rate evaporator area length of your evaporator and maximum cop whatever so we have here uh, quite interesting model so you can discover your results you can change your inputs in order to get your outputs and um, this cycle is very interesting and uh, it um, it is requested by many of uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, whom uh, seeking such uh, performance or such kind of performance you can you can attach the generator this generator for uh, attach it to a solar uh, collector or any source of solar energy of thermal energy you can attach the generator simply by using uh, our uh, risk library models uh, finally, I would like to thank you very much for your interest in our model. Don't forget to like, share and uh, subscribe.